So this is my tool height setter. Uh, it's still in somewhat of a prototype phase. Um, but essentially, when you press down here, uh, you have a little arm. And uh, your motion here is going to get multiplied by this mechanical advantage. And this arm, which is uh, a piece of, this is PLA, um, but this is uh, copper tape. Um, PLA is actually translucent to infrared. So you can, you can try to get away with using this. Um, you're not going to get a good reading. You can try to uh, use a Sharpie to, to make that black, but you're also not going to get as good of a reading. So uh, you need aluminum foil or something completely opaque to infrared light. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's pretty simple. It's just uh, you press down and uh, this lifts up. Uh, there's a spring. Let's take it apart real quick. Uh, so there's a spring that sits down here, and that's gonna that's gonna um, take any of the backlash out of the system. And um, this is a piece of Delrin. Um, there's no there's no lube in there right now. I will be uh, adding some later. But um, what I did here was um, I took a 60 millimeter. Um, I'm sorry, 60 degree V cutter and cut these notches in here. These are um, 3.14 millimeters apart from tip to tip. And this corresponds to a, 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 I think it's a module one 30 degree pressure angle. Um, and then that, that fits in here uh, with these gear teeth. Um, the hole here is, um, has been reamed to uh, 10 millimeters, and it's a pretty pretty good fit. Um, this hole is five millimeters, reamed to, reamed to exactly five millimeters. And um, this, this just goes right in here. And uh, the spring just takes the tension out of the system. Actually, I have this in here wrong. Something like that. Uh, the spring, because it's it's toothed, the spring also sets the stop on the bottom. Um, so if the spring's in the right position, that should that should always be cleared out of the way, and it it shouldn't be able to uh, go any further than that. It should actually be held down by the spring, pushing it up. Um, the other thing here is uh, this is a, a opto interrupter. Um, I also have an any five 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 timer right here. And on this side, um, there's a bunch of resistors and a signal LED. And uh, I'll go ahead and plug it in and show you how the signal works. So here it is powered on. Um, you can see the LED there. This really is not a good stand for it. So um, if I just sneak up on it, you'll see, you'll see that LED will dim. And it's kind of proportional, but to uh, how much of the the um, how much of the light is blocked. But because we have this thing on a Schmidt trigger, uh, we'll get a nice clean edge. So if I uh, put this thing into capture mode, and uh, I'll try to sneak up on it again for the capture. There. So you can see on the scope, we have a very very clean edge. Um, this is uh, 2 US or um, microseconds so uh, it does round over it's, 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 it takes about 2 US there's a weird little wiggle there I don't know what that is but um, I think for the purposes of probing uh, that's, that's, that's pretty good I was able to compare the results to, to this kinematic probe um, which is very, very sensitive. Uh, this is three axis, a three axis probe. Uh, and I was able to actually get very similar results. So uh, I would say about plus or minus 0 0.005 millimeters is uh, the accuracy of, of, of both of these. Uh, and, and my ability to measure anything less than that is probably 
constrained by the mechanics of my uh, my setup. But uh, let's go over and I'll take a look at the circuit, and I'll try to explain to you how the um, uh, how this is set up for an ESP32 and um, how I've uh, made sure that I can use a 5 volt input but I can actually read the signal on a 3.3 volt uh, logic MCU. Here's the circuit that I made for this uh, touch probe. Uh, right here you have the opto interrupter and an opto interrupter is essentially a infrared LED and a phototransistor. And this circuit's a little wonky because uh, on the VCC side here, because my other probe is a 5 volt device, and uh, I believe the, well, the, the NE555 is definitely 4.5 volts or above. And I think this phototransistor doesn't work below 4 volts. So I have a 5 volt VCC here. And um, on my phototransistor, this thing is low when there's no uh, when there's light shining on it, and when there's no light shining on it, uh, it gets pulled um, it gets pulled high, I believe, um, in this configuration. In any case, so what I did is I put in a red uh, SMD LED right here, and the polarity is going from the input here, which is going to be with with uh, nothing blocking the infrared light uh, that'll be low and then that'll be uh, pulled up via this 2k resistor to our 5 volts and if we um, if we use this leg here um, on pin 3 as our sensor output um, what we'll get when this gets pulled high is I believe 3.6 volts uh, with a red LED it really depends on the forward. I think the forward voltage of the LED. But anyway, when you when you when you block the sensor, this gets pulled up. This leg goes to three point um, uh, three point around three point six volts, and um, that gives you a you know a three roughly something you can stick into an ESP thirty two or a three point three volt um, MCU. So, uh, you know, that this is pretty straightforward. We just have this 2.2K um, uh, this resistor here, and we have a 200 ohm resistor here that, that is current limiting the infrared LED. Um, we've got the, we've got pin four here tied to ground, and we've got pin two tied to ground. So, um, down here, what I have, be, because this is an this phototransistor creates an analog signal. So this, the more intense the um, light is, the 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 more this will be zero volts essentially, or or, or the less light there is, the closer it'll be to three point six volts. Um, but if you if you're moving the if you're moving if you're seeking to probe some something slow rate like twenty five millimeters per minute. You're, you're not going to get a nice clean edge. You're actually going to have a very uh, rounded off uh, edge. So what I decided to do here uh, for a couple of reasons. The first reason is that my other probe um, has a different signal. And so there's you can't configure multiple probes in durable. Uh, so I'd have to go into the settings. And if I wanted to switch, um, if I wanted to use the different probes, I either have to create an inverter or go in and invert the the uh, the probe signal in the gerbil settings. So instead, what I decided to do was um, I found an article on how to use a 555 timer as a Schmidt trigger, and so this will accomplish two things. The first thing it will accomplish is we'll take our output signal here and it will invert the signal. The second thing that this is going to accomplish is this will create some hysteresis so that uh, number one we get a really sharp edge. Uh, when we when we cross the threshold, and number two, we'll have some immunity to noise because the the signal will not um, it will not change uh, within the the the, the two thirds reference voltage and the one third reference voltage. So if the signal is anywhere in between two thirds the reference voltage or one third the reference voltage, um, nothing will happen. And if it goes above two thirds, then we'll go ahead and we'll we'll 
will uh, trip our signal here. Um, this will go high, but the output will go low. And then if it goes below one third, uh, this will go low and the output will go high. Um, and uh, the other thing that I did here that's a little, I haven't found a lot of articles on, on the, the use of pin five, but pin, pin five can be on the NE555 timer, pin five can be used to set the reference voltage. And so um, here I just have a simple um, voltage divider. So if our VCC is five, uh, this is gonna set our reference voltage to 2.5. Um, and we can use that reference voltage, number one, as a pull up. So uh, on pin seven, uh, we'll pull up to that 2.5 reference voltage uh, and we won't exceed um, 2.5 volts on our output signal. So this, this output should be safe for uh, a 3.3 volt um, device like an ESP32. So that, that magic really happens here by using this voltage divider to set uh, the reference voltage on pin five. Um, the, um, the other difference here is uh, normally when you see a Schmidt trigger set up with an NE555, the output is, is, is fed from pin three. And if you look at the voltage on pin three with the circuit, um, this will actually output the full five volts or around 4.6 volts actually. Um, but because, uh, because of the way this is set up and because we're using this reference voltage, uh, if we pull our output off of pin seven, um, we'll actually get, we'll get the range that we want for an ESP32 or 3.3 volt logic.